G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Well, what a week and now going into the weekend it has been. It has been absolutely unbelievable the way basically everything has been performing for oh, a week or two now. It's really been hectic. Now I'm just going to come out there and say it. I have taken some, I won't say significant profits, but I've definitely taken some profits. I think I've probably cashed out, I'd have to say, somewhere like nearly 10% of all of my crypto. Uh, I just thought, you know, things have been going too well and usually when they pump like this, there's a correction that is not far away. So that's what I did. Now again, it's only 10%, I still got 90% of my skin in the game, but I just wanted to make sure that I at least had close to what I had invested initially. Now I don't quite have close, and again, I think it was probably a little bit under 10% what I've actually put in, because I haven't 10 x my money, that would be nice. <laughs> but I've got probably, I don't know, around about half of what I initially put in. I do expect things to go higher, but I just get the feeling like there's gonna be a correction sometime soon, and I might be able to buy in uh, at cheaper prices. But look, even if I'm wrong, that old saying, no one ever lost money taking profits, so I haven't lost anything, I have made money. So yeah, that's what I've done. Love to know uh, down below your thoughts, have you taken any profits lately? Or again, are you just still riding this and seeing how far it'll go? All right, market cap, $1.5 trillion. So I mean, <laughs> yeah, that is unbelievable. We were struggling with that kind of, you know, seven, eight hundred million dollar mark, and we've made that uh, in a matter of just a couple of weeks. So things really are starting to move, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get up to, oh, I'm going to say maybe five trillion dollars in the not too distant future. We could have some hefty pullbacks, but I mean, we made half a trillion dollars very very quickly again it was only like a week ago maybe a little bit more that we were sitting around that 900 million dollar mark so we have made that up oh so quickly bitcoin dominance were like right under now it was kind of tiptoeing around that you know 59 percent 61 percent and now 58 percent it just continues to get lower at the moment eth dominance growing i mean look at the gas fees that's that's what tells you how well the altcoins are doing at the moment. Again, people are just piling into altcoins at the moment. It really is, you know, put your money into anything and you can almost guarantee that it's going to run. That is what really worries me though, which again is why I took some profits. And look, in the end, if, you know, there is no big correction anytime soon, I haven't lost money. I have made money. I've just lost some, you know, maybe unrealized gains. But I could be sitting quite pretty if we have a reasonable size correction sometime soon. And again, it doesn't matter how much your crypto becomes worth. If you don't ever sort of cash out, and you do have to cash out at the moment, because when the next bear cycle comes, and it will come, particularly in the altcoins, you will lose oh so much. So for me, I took some profits. And again, it hurts to watch them go up when they continue to go up. But in the end, like I said, no one loses money taking profits. All right, let's have a look. What's really, really pumped? Because everything's been pumping, really. IOST, 40%, again, 103% in seven days. Near 40%. Algorand, 40%. VeChain, oh, 34%. Stellar, 30%. This is what concerns me. This is really like just altcoin euphoria. I get the feeling that a correction is going to come soon. But I've been wrong before and I could be wrong again. What I really think is going to happen is a lot of the profits that are coming out of the alts are going to move back into Bitcoin and Bitcoin's going to go on another run. That's what I suspect will likely happen, but we'll have to wait and see. Again, I could be wrong and I've been wrong before. All right, in amongst all this green, it'd be amazing. Is there any losses in the top 100 at least? And what is the biggest loss? Well, there we go, Ample Force, 5%. Nano, 5%. Monero 2%, so almost no losses. There's like maybe 10 coins that have had losses and they are really in the low single digits. So this feels like euphoria to me. This really does feel like late 2017. And that's what has me worried. You know, have we all miscalculated how far this bull run can go and has this been it? 
I don't think that's what's it. But again, I do just get the gut feeling that there's probably going to be a fairly big correction coming soon, but we'll have to wait and see. And I did sell some Bitcoin as well at 47,000. So basically where it is now. Now, not a lot, but I sold some. I sold some ETH as well. And I'm just trying to get back what uh, I'd initially put in. Now, I haven't quite got initially what I put in in Bitcoin. Uh, I think I've just got a little bit more than what I put in in ETH now. Uh, and the same goes for a number of other coins, but yeah, I'm not exactly even, but thereabouts. So if anything drastic does happen, at least I don't just, you know, really get hammered. At least I've taken some back. All right, now there's been some good news, but let's have a look at the chart first, because here is the Bitcoin chart. It is just really kind of hovering around, yeah, this 47000 48000 $49,000 mark. So it is back in price discovery again. But we're just waiting to see is it going to consolidate here and go much higher i think that's most likely what's going to happen and that's what makes me think money from the alts will come out of the alts and start to pour back into bitcoin but we'll have to wait and see it's just yeah unbelievable times at the moment and yeah from previous experience i know they don't last forever and they're usually shorter uh, sort of short-lived they only last for a, like a couple of weeks to a couple of months and look I mean you know this is where Bitcoin has gone since 27th of January so it's been slowly going up but really the altcoins have sort of been pumping since yeah really back here about the 8th of January so that is a month and a bit that they've been pumping so yeah if you haven't you know double tripled your money then you've probably been in the wrong coins because most coins have done that and some not all of them now here's some interesting news that makes me think we can't be over just yet so australian regulators are open to a bitcoin etf as long as there's rules in place so the australian securities and investments commission has clarified its position regarding bitcoin like exchange traded funds the ATSIC, which is the Australian Securities Investments Commission Commissioner, Catherine Armour, told the Senate Elect Committee on Financial Technology Friday that a Bitcoin ETF is possible so long as there are appropriate rules in place in the market on which it is traded. Now, Armour said that a Bitcoin ETF could fall under Australian Securities Exchange's ACWA rules, which are specifically designed for investment schemes like a managed funds ETFs and other products. Now, an Australian company... Uh, Cosmos did attempt to put one in, but they didn't have uh, any luck at the time. But now they've got this. We can go down here. Cosmos Capital is now reportedly planning to list a Bitcoin ETF on the ASX, which could potentially become Australia's first ETF linked to Bitcoin. Cosmos did not immediately respond to Cointelegraph's request for a comment. Now, this is Australia getting a Bitcoin ETF. The first Bitcoin ETF is about to be approved or has been approved in North America, so Canada. So the first publicly traded Bitcoin exchange trade fund or an ETF in North America has been given the go ahead by Canada's financial regulator. Now we're still waiting for one in America. They are kind of lagging behind at the moment and that will really, you know, set the market alight. But at the moment, there is one in Canada there's one uh, in Australia likely coming very, very soon. Hasn't been green lit or anything like that. And I know, I think there's one over in Switzerland or something like that as well. So we're just waiting for the really, really big one uh, in the States to come. And that's really going to kickstart this whole, you know, a Bitcoin ETF at least, and then worldwide adoption of cryptocurrencies. But speaking of worldwide adoption, this I found interesting. So PayPal getting right into cryptocurrency at the moment and obviously starting to offer it to the world. But PayPal will probably avert from investing its cash into Bitcoin. Despite the recent expanding interest from institutions in digital assets, the US payment giant will not get into the crypto whirlpool, said the firm's chief financial officer. I think they're just nervous at the moment that it is overpriced and they see a big correction coming and that's why they don't want to get into it. They want to wait to see cheaper prices. And look, for their sake, I hope they sort of see that coming, but they may not. I mean, we may be at a price that just won't be seen again. We'll have to wait and see. But likewise, in saying that, this is what a lot of companies are saying until later they come out and say they have invested. Because if they say, yeah, we're looking to get into Bitcoin, 
all of a sudden the price jacks up. So they're going to say at the moment, and it does say here, PayPal will probably avert from investing its cash into Bitcoin. Not they will. So there is a chance that they are already currently doing it and they're just trying not to jack up the price before they can get it done. But also, again, it is possible that they just think, look, we're already selling it and we're making so much cash and they obviously believe that another bear market is going to come at some stage and that the bear market may offer them a better opportunity to get in. And look, that is possible. That is entirely possible. But maybe it's not as well. Who knows? That's a bit of a risky move from PayPal. But I mean, they're making, you know, US dollars by the bucket loads at the moment from cryptocurrency. So do they really need to get involved? Who knows? But what we need to remember is while they may be making lots of, you know, US dollars in cryptocurrency, uh, through cryptocurrencies, that US do dollar is getting eaten away at about 12 to 15% on a yearly basis, I think. So, you know, they are losing a whole lot at the same time. So interesting. We'll wait and see what play plays out with PayPal. Interesting times. I would be surprised if they don't put at least some of their cash into Bitcoin, but you know, their call. Cool. All right, something else to do with worldwide adoption. So Colombia's financial superintendent wants to spread crypto accessibility and look for places, you know, again, that are a little bit impoverished and things like that. Not that all of uh, Colombia or South America are impoverished, but they have a number of people that are. I think cryptocurrencies are a great way for them to get out of it. But again, they still need to understand the cycles and that, and you know, understand that they probably need to hold long term. But even in short term, some of them can make some really good gains. But, you know, usually impoverished people don't have great education systems. So if they don't really understand money and then again, crypto cycles, you know, there are chances and the chances are probably somewhat reasonable that you know some of them at the very least will get wrecked by a cycle so you know it has its upsides and its downsides but i'll read on the republic of colombia and south america has been friendly toward crypto assets like bitcoin and other digital currencies over the years more recently during the first week of january 2021 the superintendents of corporations of colombia explained in an official circ uh, circular that local firms can leverage capital to purchase bitcoin now the Financial Superintendents of Colombia, or FSC, has revealed a trial between regulated financial institutions in the country and digital currency exchanges. The organisation uh, tied to Colombia's Ministry of Finance and Public Credit shared a tweet on January 29, 2021, that informed the public about the alliance between a number of national banks and a select group of crypto exchanges. The mission is to enable more cryptocurrency operations to make the crypto economy in Colombia more accessible. And again, I think for the really impoverished, this is going to be a great way to go. Again, you know, they can make US dollars, but the US dollar... Uh, is losing money and likely their national capital, their national, you know, money, which whatever it is, I'm not sure what it is in Colombia, is likely losing money as well. Most currencies in the world are just dying. They're based on that fiat system. So if they can get into things, and particularly like Bitcoin, yes, there's going to be periods where it's going to go down. But if they can manage to just hold a tiny little bit and you know maybe they get lucky and buy some at the very start of a bull run so again you know like march last year they would be so much better off right now and that is what can really change the lives of basically anyone really including the rich but particularly people uh, who are poor if they can get in at the right time and hold and things like that they'll be much better off all right Last but not least, we're going to finish on a bit of a, not so much a sour note, but here's a gentleman. He used to be a bit of a, a crypto enthusiast. So Black Swan author Nassim Taleb says he's dumping all his Bitcoin. Now, that's a bit sad. So Nassim Nicholas Taleb, hopefully I'm saying that right. The Black Swan author and frequent tweeter wrote today that he's in the process of dumping his Bitcoin. A currency is never supposed to be more volatile than what you buy and sell with it, he said. You can't price goods in Bitcoin. Look, I would agree with that. Uh, at the moment, that won't last forever. And the long-term upside for Bitcoin uh, is that it will become a whole lot less volatile, but it is most likely going to continue to appreciate. Now, again, don't dump everything into Bitcoin because of the volatility but gee, if you can put, you know, 
one, two, five, ten percent of whatever you're worth into it and simply hold for the long term, then you're probably going to do all right. Now, that's not financial advice, and I never give financial advice. No one can tell the future, but what's the option? You know, you get into US dollars and watch 12 to 15 percent of it get eroded away on a yearly basis. Now, if you're losing 12 to 15 percent and a bank is only paying you one to two percent, then you're losing 13% of your buying value every single year. So you tell me, you know, can you handle 70% retracements for three years, but then hundreds of percent uh, gains over the next year or two? I know which one I'm taking. It just, again, don't dump all your money into it then if you can't handle the, you know, possible 70% losses that occur. But if you can handle the 100% gains that you may make in the future, well, you tell me again, which one's working out better for you? The US dollar or the Bitcoin currency? All right, my second question and final thing for the day is I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Could you, do you think you would be better off putting in at least some, I wouldn't recommend putting all into just Bitcoin because of the volatility, but putting some of your money into Bitcoin, writing out those, you know, possible 70% retracements to then have the, you know, the access to the you know couple of hundred percent gains you may make in the next bull run and are likely to make based on history at the moment. I mean, I know which one I'm doing. You know, I can go into the Australian dollar, the US dollar, the euro. It doesn't matter. They're all being debased. It doesn't matter which one it is. The fiat system. That's how it works. It is. It's based all around debt and depreciating money, unfortunately. And the banks here in Australia, I think at the moment they are offering point zero two percent interest so imagine if you've got negative interest and they're taxing you to have money in your bank account which is losing its value at the same time so it's like twofold you're getting sort of hammered right there so yeah i know where i'm putting my money uh love to know your thoughts again do you think putting at least you know let's say a minimum of five percent of your you know net worth into bitcoin is the better the better alternative as opposed to simply putting it into US dollars and watching it lose money. I mean, there's property, you know, and there's stocks, but, you know, stocks, while not as volatile, a lot of people say they're just completely overinflated at the moment. But look, that would go towards uh, cryptocurrency as well. Once the money machine stops, things could drastically change. And I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that gain train. I've taken some profits. I don't know about you. I'll see you next time.